رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد فالسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, My dear respected brothers and sisters First and foremost I apologize for the delay in beginning this segment of today's event I got held up with something that was unexpected and it was out of my control and I tried to get here as soon as possible. But subhanAllah, I was thinking whilst I was logging on that what just happened to me and the delay that uh, occurred is completely linked with the topic that I was asked to deliver the reminder on. And I was asked to deliver the reminder on being positive and positivity in Islam. So when things, things like this happen in Islam, what is the position a Muslim student or a Muslim in general is meant to uphold. How is he meant to behave? How is he meant to react? You are waiting for somebody. You have an appointment with somebody. They have delayed you. They didn't turn up. They didn't get through back to you. They didn't respond to your messages. They are not uh, responding to your calls, etc. How is a Muslim meant to behave? And how is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishing to see this Muslim behave? It is a way of positivity. It is a way of not being pessimistic and negative. It is a way of good thought. It is a way of having healthy assumptions. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, he said, Ana inda dhanna abdi bi, dhanna abdi ma sha. I am exactly how my slave thinks of me. Allah is saying, I am how my slave thinks of me. So let my slave think whatever he wants of me. So if you think positive of Allah, Allah will be positive towards you. And if you see Allah to be negative and you're pessimistic towards your thinking about Allah, because obviously Allah only does what's best for the slave. But if the slave views that to be something negative and bad, then they are going to be treated in that way. And whatever befalls them, whatever tragedy and calamity comes their way, they will never be able to take that burden so to speak. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran that he never burdens the souls more than that which they can bear in order to teach us that we should be positive. And this is for our dunya and for our akhirah alike because there are going to be struggles and there are going to be trials and tests and there's going to be things that don't go smoothly for us. So during all of these times, we ensure that we are positive. So this is the first hadith I wanted to begin with. The hadith Qudsi, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, I am how my slave thinks of me. So let my slave thinks, think whatever he wants of me. And this is pushing positivity. This is the first thing. The second thing is, I wanted to take a brief trip to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's lifetime. We see the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him and gave him revelation that he is the most beloved person to Allah and that he has the most fear of Allah and he has the most knowledge of Allah. But despite all of that, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he wasn't a rich man. He didn't have much money, in fact. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was given revelation, he was given a message. And the majority of the people at his time, in the beginning stages at least, they didn't accept his message. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, at times people would come to him and they would say that they are thirsty, they would say that they are hungry, and he's the prophet of Allah, the leader of the Muslims. And so he would direct this individual to his home. And his wife would have to say, I swear by the one who sent you here, that we don't have anything at home except for water. So he's a prophet of Allah, the most beloved human being to Allah. But the only thing he can offer his guest is water. He is the one, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that during the expeditions and the battles of Islam, his teeth were broken. He was spat at. He was slandered, insulted. People called him a magician. They called him a soothsayer. They called him a liar. And imagine an individual that's never told a lie in his whole life to call him a liar. The scholars of Islam, they say that's more painful towards him than striking him with a thousand lashes. Because he's been truthful his whole life, before prophecy and after prophecy. So to call him a liar, he'd rather prefer to be struck with 1,000 lashes. He is the one that buried the majority of his children in his lifetime. He was kicked out and driven out of his birth city, Mecca. 
all of those things happened to him and he remained positive because he wanted to leave behind a legacy that all of his nation, including us, the latecomers, they benefit from. Teaching you, O Muslim, you are not even going to go through half of the things that Muhammad وسلم, went through, anywhere near what he went through. But if he remained positive during those times, then the things that you are going to, that are going to occur in your life, it is incumbent upon you to be positive. So what's, what's linked to this is, a person sometimes, the smallest of things, they feel depressed, anxiety, stress, mental health problems. They feel so bad. It's a small thing. They didn't get the job they wanted. They didn't get the grades they wanted. They didn't get married when they wanted to get married. The marriage was delayed. Things that are so basir, things that are very insignificant, things that are very trivial and small, their whole mental health is messed up. If there was one individual, if there was one individual that was deserving of being diagnosed with mental health, then it would be the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But he wasn't like that because he was positive. And his religion was a religion that came with positivity. And his Lord was a Lord that is positive in terms of how he showers his slaves with all of his blessings and how he gives them all of the virtues that they have without them being deserving of them. You find a person, subhanAllah, that they when it comes to the worship of Allah, when it comes to being obedient and loyal to Allah, they struggle in this area. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to give them more and more in order to educate these people and tell them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching them that his mercy has preceded his wrath. And thus, this is something positive. So this is the second hadith I wanted to mention. This hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where he says, indeed, my Lord, his mercy has preceded his wrath. And the Prophet Sallallahu he embodied this in his life, like I mentioned. He knew, he knew that Allah was merciful towards him. So although all those things happened in his life, he remembered the hadith, that Allah is more merciful than being not merciful. And so the Prophet Sallallahu he remained positive. And the final thing I wanted to mention, inshaAllah Ta'ala, because I know I came late, is with positivity, a person has a calm heart. A person he will feel peace within his heart. He will feel serenity. And he will be increased in yaqeen and conviction. Because it is as if through the different things that are happening in his life, be it good or bad, when they're always seeing things in a positive light, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching this person directly. Because Allah teaches mankind directly, like the Quran mentions. Allah says in the Quran, Allam al insana ma lam ya'lam. He taught mankind that which they didn't know before. So when a person, he tries his best to adorn himself with this positivity and he keeps it within his heart despite everything that may happen to him, then with this, inshaAllah ta'ala, he will live in this world as a happy Muslim, as a content believer. And in the afterlife, he will see great reward. And the final bit that's linked to this third part that I wanted to mention is sabr. Because sabr is linked with positivity. At times, it's easy to be positive. But at other times, it's very difficult to be positive. So you require patience in order to remain positive. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he speaks about positivity in the Quran. And he says, positivity is like, is like the sun. Like Ibn al-Qayyim mentions. Allah says, هُوَ الَّذِي جَعَلَ الشَّمْسَ ضِيَاءً وَالْقَمَرَ نُورًا And he is the one who made the sun a bright and shining illuminated light. And he is the one who made the moon but a light. And so the scholars, they say that the place of the sun is sabr. And sabr gives this illuminating light, this bright and shining light to all of your other actions. And that's why in Islam, sabr is of three categories. To be patient first and foremost when it comes to righteous actions. Because if you are not patient, your soul wants to disobey Allah. Your soul wants to be disloyal to Allah. Your soul does not desire to worship Allah. So you remain patient in order to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So being patient when it comes to righteous actions, when it comes to the prayer, when it comes to fasting long hours, when it comes to reciting the Quran, when it comes to studying Islamic knowledge, and even other types of knowledge for the student who is going to university. That's the first type of patience. And then the second type, second type of patience is a sabr ala al maasiyah To be patient when it comes to sinning. For you to be able to control your soul and not sin and disobey Allah for you to be able to control your desires. 
because the Prophet وسلم, he said that Jannah, paradise, is surrounded by hardship. Paradise is surrounded by hardship. And he said, as for Jahannam, then the hellfire is surrounded by desires. Whomsoever wants to fall into Jahannam, then they just need to follow their desires. But whomsoever wants to go towards Jannah, they need to be able to maintain the hardship for a little while. You see, both of them require patience now. And patience is going to take us back to positivity, which is the topic. Because if paradise is surrounded by hardship, then you have to endure the hardship and be patient. And as for Jahannam, in order to be saved from it, then the Prophet ﷺ said it is surrounded by desires. So you need to control your desires and have patience also. All of this alludes to the person being positive in Islam. And finally, the last part of patience is to be patient when it comes to the calamities that befall a person. You fall sick, you fall unwell, and we're in this. We're in the middle of this serious pandemic, and people are falling ill, and family members are falling ill, and critically ill. Some of them, and some of them are even passing away. And may Allah forgive all of their souls, and the ones who are unwell, may Allah cure them, and the ones who haven't contracted the virus, then may Allah protect them. But all of this requires patience, and it requires positivity to see things in the greater light, how Allah sees it. Don't you see, O Muslim, that this pandemic, for example, that Allah has sent down, it's order in its, he has been sent down in order for you to be purified from your sins, in order for Allah Jalla wa'ala to raise your rank and to elevate your status. All of these things are the different ways that a person can remain positive in Islam. So we began with the hadith to summarize of the Prophet ﷺ, where he reported that Allah said that he is how his slave thinks of him. So let his slave think whatever he wishes. So this is showing positivity. You need to think positive of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then we spoke about the other hadith where the Prophet ﷺ, he said, indeed, uh, our Lord, he said that his mercy has preceded his wrath. And the Prophet ﷺ, he embodied that despite everything that happened to him, all of these great tests, he remained patient and he remained positive. And finally, right now, we just spoke about the different types of patience. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us those who are positive in whatever we do in our lives. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to remain patient despite whatever happens in our life, whether it's to do with our dunya, whether it is to do with our akhirah, our religious affairs, our worldly affairs. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you all for your time. Jazakumullah khair for lending your ear. And I apologize once again, like I apologized in the beginning for turning up late. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us all to be reunited in the highest Jannah in the Waliyu Darika Wal Qadiru Ali wa Sallallahu Ala Nabina Muhammad wa Ala Alihi wa Sahbiya Jameen Alhamdulillah Rabbi Alameen wa Salaam Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh khair for that talk. Uh, no need to apologize, it was a very lovely talk, Alhamdulillah. I think uh, it's, it's very needed now, uh, more than ever, uh, especially with the uh, with with the pandemic, lockdown, and people feeling a little bit isolated. So it's, it's really important that we have this positivity, this patience, and a very good mindset. Um, yeah. So actually, I do have some questions from uh, our participants that I'm going to read to you. And then, inshallah, I could answer, answer the questions uh, in the next five, ten minutes. Um, so uh, someone's asking, uh, What's the exact reference for the hadith at the, at the beginning, uh, so they can find it later? The hadith in the beginning? Yes. The exact reference, uh, in terms of the number of the hadith, then I would have to get back to the person who asked. But this hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim. But as for the number of the hadith, which hadith number it is, I don't recall it at the moment, but it's in Bukhari and Muslim. Bahrain. Okay, that's, that's fine. And uh, second question, how does one train and develop their patience? Uh, SubhanAllah, we are so short of patience nowadays, but how can we increase it? Uh, wallahi, there is a number of ways of doing that, but maybe a long lasting way is to look a Muslim towards how your Lord has treated you. Look how many mistakes you have come with, how many shortcomings and deficiencies. And is there anybody who has given you more than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The answer is no. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, despite your mistakes and your shortcomings and your sinning and your, you being disloyal to him, and everybody is disloyal, that's why we say that, because all of us sin. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to give. So we are never going to be like Allah. 
but at least if, you ma if we manifest this type of patience or forbearance, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has forbearance towards his slave, then if we manifest something like that, even if it's half of that with the creation, then inshallah ta'ala, with that, our ranks will be raised. But it's a very broad question. There are a number of ways to develop patience, but I would say a person should always look towards how the Lord is with them. And with that, inshallah ta'ala, they would be able to behave accordingly when it comes to the fellow humans that they interact with. And Allah knows best as well. Inshallah. Inshallah. And uh, uh, also, what's, what's the role of gratitude and, and having a positive mindset? What do you say? What's the? Uh, what's the role of gratitude? Uh, what's uh, the what's role? this role of gratitude and, and having a positive mindset? What's the reward, did you say? Uh, role, <laughs> role, sorry about that. What's uh, role the of gratitude? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So if a person is grateful and appreciative of that which they are given, then this will help them be positive. And subhanAllah, these two things, are, they necessitate one another. You can't be a grateful person and be negative. It doesn't make sense. You can't be pessimistic if you are grateful. And you can't be positive and not be grateful. It doesn't make sense. So this, subhanAllah, question, I think it will only transpire for the person once they are truly positive. Or once they are truly grateful, they will see. If you're talking about gratitude, then you will only see gratitude in your life when you are positive. And the opposite is true. If you are a grateful person, then you are genuinely going to be positive. Like we said, you can't be negative. So these two things are together. And as for the role that it has, then this makes you um, be increased in your virtues and the favors. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, he says, if you are grateful, then I will give you more. So when a person is grateful, then they will be, be given more in this world and in the akhirah. And it could be worldly, it could be religious. So if you are grateful, then the role that this has for you in your deen is that you only get more and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. And uh, another question. Um, do you have any ideas on how we can uh, apply uh, the advice to our ISOCs uh, so we can encourage uh, our Islamic societies to, to be more positive in, in their community? Uh, how can we encourage the ISOCs? Uh, these questions are very broad questions. Uh, there are a number of ways of encouraging the ISOC. Um, first and foremost, it is through uh, example. So the previous uh, brothers and sisters who had roles in the previous years uh, with the younger uh, year groups and those who are starting for the first time, the freshers, all of these groups, then it is upon the ones who were there before to lead by example and to also allow them to see how they are behaving as a student and as a Muslim student specifically. So how do you juggle your studies and how do you also juggle your worship and your religious commitment? So when you do this, you are encouraging them because they see SubhanAllah studying and being a Muslim isn't two things that are difficult and I don't have to compromise my religion. I don't have to do any of that. And how do I know that? I see that because of the older members or the older groups or these brothers and sisters who have been in the ISOC before me. So I would say to lead by example, inshallah ta'ala. Saying a lot of things and all of these um, messages that we send and send to them and you welcome to the university and welcome to study and this is what you should expect. This is good, but this is not enough because it's just messages. It's just uh, writing. But when you spend time with them, when they actualize it, when they see it right in front of them, that's subhanAllah, this is something that is very, very practical. Me being a student and me studying as well, then inshallah ta'ala, you will leave a positive impact on them and Allah knows this. Inshallah. Okay, that's fine. We've got a few more questions. Um, uh, and uh, someone's saying, Jazakallah khair uh, any practical day-to-day -day tips on how to stay positive? Um, first and foremost, something that we belittle is making dua to us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the bestower of all favors and virtues, including positivity. So for him to send down and to pour down onto your heart on Muslim positivity, then you need to ask him because it is with him that you uh, become positive and he's the one who allows that to happen. So first and foremost, to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to make it from the du'as that you make on a daily basis. Secondly, uh, what will also help you inshallah ta'ala is to be somebody who considers every single favor that happens, uh, that comes their way to be something 
major, something great. Every single thing that is done for you, don't see it to be minor. Don't deem anything to be minor. Because when you deem things to be minor on a daily basis, you are not going to be positive and you are not going to be grateful as well. Because why? You think this is, you're deserving of it. You're deserving of this. Even if it's the day-to-day things at home, uh, your wife cooked you food or your husband bought you food or your mother cooked you food or your father, or things like this you are not positive normally we don't say who from amongst us today for example had lunch or had breakfast and said alhamdulillah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided me with this meal i'm so grateful to allah i'm very positive because allah mentions this in the quran he says he says let man look at his food and this doesn't mean just to look at your food to see how many, how much rice is on the plate, how much uh, chicken is on the plate, because you look at your food every day. This is talking about looking with reflection to be positive and to be grateful. And Allah is telling us this to do on a day-to-day basis. The question is, how can I, how can I be positive and train myself to be positive? And also grateful, gratefulness will come under it on a day-to-day basis. This is one example. Treat every single thing that you have in your life to be something great. When you do that, inshallah ta'ala, you are a positive person. You are a grateful person and you will be free from being heedless, inshallah ta'ala, and Allah's blessing. Inshallah ta'ala. Okay, and we've got another question. How do you protect yourself uh, from envy and jealousy that would make you ungrateful? How do you protect yourself from envy and jealousy? Then a person has to look towards what they have. In this case, look towards what you have. Because when you are envious or jealous towards others, it is normally because you... Uh, have observed them with something that you ha- that they have that you do not have but how many things do you have that they do not have look towards yourself and focus on yourself and see how many things that Allah Jalla wa'ala has bestowed upon you when you see that you will be a person who is not insecure because normally when a person is envious and jealous of others they're insecure they're looking why do they have that how comes they have this I don't have that that's so good but how many things do you have that that other person and more much more people as well they would want to have and obtain as well. So look towards yourself. See how many, see the, the ayah of Allah within yourself. You are a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's walking and talking. And when you look towards yourself, inshallah ta'ala, this will cure jealousy and envy. But if a person has jealousy and envy, it's not enough to just do what I'm saying here. It takes a long process, but this is uh, a way to treat it, inshallah ta'ala. And Allah knows this. And uh, someone's also asking, um, do you have any tips for being a good head brother? Uh, to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to do things sincerely for the sake of Allah. If you are fearing Allah in this task of yours, being the head brother or the head sister, this applies for everybody who's listening, even with tasks outside of university, anything in life in general. And also you are sincere in your pursuit, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you in your pursuit. And what's very, very, very important is don't try to be a good head brother. <laughs> meaning, meaning, don't try your best to come across like you are the, the best person for the role or you are doing so much for the ISOC or just trying to portray a side that just pushes that you are doing a lot. Don't do any of that. If you do the two things that I have said, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will place barakah in your efforts. And then people will see the goodness that you have brought to the university and the ISOC. So the first one is to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as possible. And the second one will be to be sincere in your pursuit. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless it for you. Then you will be the good head brother. And then inshallah ta'ala, everybody will uh, benefit from what you have to offer inshallah. Allah knows best. Inshallah. Uh, yes, uh, I have a question that's very related to this one. Uh, so someone says that they've joined uh, ISOC with pure intentions, but how do they ensure that uh, their intentions don't get muted? And what do they do if they start looking at the ISOCs, definitely? Uh, can you ask one more time, inshallah? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Uh, so they joined the ISOC with, the, with good-hearted intentions, but they're afraid that their intentions would get polluted. So how would they make sure their intentions stay? <laughs> intentions are something very difficult, and every single human being battles with their intentions. Um, so I wanted to begin with that first, just to remind the questioner that this is something that's very natural. Um, as for battling with your intentions, then 
remind yourself of the virtues of what you are doing. So if you remind yourself and you revisit the virtues that uh, this particular action you are doing, if you are a head brother, for example, or if you are involved in the ISOC on a different level, the virtue it has to inspire other people in their studies and they go on later to inspire further people and you have impacted their life and you've helped them in some shape or form then if you do things like that you see how rewarding it is and thus you are doing it for the sake of Allah because you remember the virtues but when a person their heart and their mind is absent from the virtues then here they begin to battle with their intentions because they don't know why they're doing things anymore and this is something that we hear normally that is told to us. When you don't know why you're doing something anymore, then you're a person who's normally not sincere because they don't know why they're doing it. So I would say remind yourself, why did you even start this in the beginning? Try to get that. And if you don't have any answers, then you need to come up with answers because that will help you be steadfast, inshallah ta'ala, even with your intentions. And if you do have answers for them, then remind yourself of them. Okay, and I'll ask you one last, one last question. Uh, so in, in the first moment, you're stuck with a calamity. Uh, what should be the first step you take uh, in the heat of the moment? Uh, okay, so the calamities are different. There's big calamities, there's smaller calamities, there's ma major, minor ones. Uh, but the Prophet Sallallahu Subhanallah, the way you, the question I asked, the question is how he answered it. He said, as عند الصدمة الأولى That he said, patience is in the first strike, the first blow. So when the calamity comes, this is when you're meant to be patient. Some people think that after the calamity strikes, them being patient after that means that they are patient. No, patience is in the moment whilst you are in that moment. The, the calamity could be different. So how are you meant to react? The only generic thing I can say is positivity because anything after that, it depends on what the calamity is. For example, sometimes something goes wrong in the family. Something goes wrong amongst your friends at the university in the ISOC. Something goes wrong in your religion. Something goes wrong uh, at your workplace. It's all different things that can happen in a person's life. So based on what has happened, then a person has to take a specific uh, route in, in order to solve this. So what is uh, generic though that we can say is to be patient inshallah ta'ala in the first strike. There was a woman who lost her child during the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he came to her and he saw her. And she kind of sent the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam away. She didn't really want to speak to him. But she didn't realize that was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because of how excessively she was crying and wailing and it's a famous hadith i'm sure a lot of the brothers and sisters they have heard of it and later on she was informed that the person you pushed away and you didn't want to speak to was the prophet sallallahu so she felt bad and she went to him and then he told her to fear allah because the way she treated that calamity and the first strike when it came was uh, excessive she was crying which is normal because you lost a loved one but she was wailing and she was losing her mind and this is not something that is positive. This is being pessimistic. And she was so pessimistic and negative that she didn't even recognize the Prophet ﷺ when he came in front of her. And then he said to her the hadith I just mentioned. He said, patience is in the first blow. As soon as the calamity happens, be patient. As for specific answers, then, uh, because I don't know what the calamity is, then I wouldn't be able to answer that, inshallah ta'ala. But jazakallah khairan. And Allah knows what it's about. Jazakallah khair. Um, I do have a very, uh, I, said, I know I said it was the last question, but I do have one final question, uh, if you're okay. Um, this is more specific, and someone's asking, how, how can you stay patient through a, chron a chronic illness where there may, might not be a treatment or signs, are getting better, or signs of getting better? SubhanAllah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure all those who are unwell. Allahumma ameen. And, you know, a person, before they go into Jannah, then a person must be purified. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he purifies the individual uh, in many ways, but there are three main ways. Either he purifies them in this world. How would he do that? By uh, sending their way calamities, tragedies, uh, illnesses like this that you're mentioning, a very serious illness. Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will purify this individual in the grave. So the grave, as we know, it will be a garden from the gardens of Jannah or it will be a pit from the pits of Jahannam. So a person will be purified there if they are punished, for example, in order to lessen their punishment in the afterlife. And the third stage would be the afterlife itself. 
sometimes some of the believers, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who enter Jannah immediately. But there will be some believers who will be punished and purified in Jahannam for a little while, and then they will enter paradise after that. But what concerns us here with this question is, with illnesses like this, the individual is being purified from their sins. They are being given an opportunity that nobody else has been given. Other people have not been diagnosed with this illness. So you have to see it like that. Although it's hard during those moments because of how difficult it is, but a person understands that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving them a very high rank at the moment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is purifying them. So perhaps he will make their standing before him and their accountability in the afterlife easy. I would say that this is a way uh, to help the individual, inshallah ta'ala. Inshallah. Yeah, um, I think that wraps up uh, very nicely. And just like Allah for answering all the questions and for your very lovely and useful talk uh, today. Uh, exactly. Thank you so much. Barakallah fiqo. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all for arranging this. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless the rest of the event, inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.